All right, so this is section 14.5, covers the chain rule. And the chain rule is going to answer our question of how to understand the derivative of a function if more than one of the variables is perhaps changing at a time. It's also going to give us a great trick for doing implicit differentiation of a two-variable function, which is something you did in Calculus 1. So here's our motivational example, and this is something we've seen before. We're again going to assume that uh, Jinteki Corporation makes widgets. It sells them for $100 each, and uh, the price that it is able to charge does not depend on how many it makes, and so its revenue is always going to be 100 times the number of widgets it sells. But as we noted before, the partial derivative of p with respect to w, which is 100, does not correctly calculate the effect of increasing production on profit. So how do we calculate this correctly? Remember, the issue here is that cost is also a function of the number of widgets that we make. And so instead of thinking of it, uh, instead of thinking of cost as a constant, we need to accept that cost is also a function of w. So instead of uh, writing the function this way, we could instead write something like p equals revenue minus cost. And revenue is a function of the number of widgets we make, and cost is also a function of the number of widgets we make. And if we differentiate this, if we want to know the amount that p changes with respect to the number of widgets, well, then we differentiate r with respect to the number of widgets, and that tells us how quickly the revenue will increase. But we also differentiate c with respect to the number of widgets, and that will tell us how quickly the cost will increase. And that increased cost has to be subtracted from our profits. So in this case, uh, dr dw, because we know r, is 100w. dc dw, we don't know. But if we could calculate that, then we would know how profit changes as a function of w. The chain rule tells us how to deal with this situation in general, when we have a function of multiple variables, but each of those variables is changing, or is itself a function of some third variable. And the impetus for this, or at least uh, the way to think about it, is by thinking about the differential. Remember, the differential tells us how z changes, or at least the, tangent, the z of the tangent plane changes. And it says that if you want to understand how much z changes in the tangent plane, then you take the partial derivative of the function with respect to x times the amount that x changes, and the partial derivative with respect to y uh, times the amount that y changes. All we do for the chain rule is replace the dz, dx, and dy, which are just changes, by rates of change. Now, the theorem is not so straightforward as just dividing through by dt. Uh, but that's a useful heuristic for you to have uh, to connect these two ideas. So here's the theorem. If z is a function of x and y, and we define x to be a function of t and y to be a function of t, and if these functions are differentiable, then dz dt is equal to the partial derivative of z with respect to x times dx dt plus the partial derivative with respect to y times dy dt. Notice that. Some of these terms are partial derivatives, and some of them are ordinary derivatives. Because x is a one variable function, dx dt is an ordinary one variable derivative. And because y is a one variable function of t, dy dt is also an ordinary derivative. Now, why can we think of dz dt as being a single variable derivative? Well, that's because if we think of z as a composition of functions, if we plugged in g of t for x and g of t for y, then we can actually think of z as being a single variable function of t. So let's apply the chain rule uh, to our previous example. Here I've given us an actual function for cost, 3,000 plus 70w minus 0.1w squared. In real terms, this means that there's a fixed cost of about 3,000. 3, there's a cost of about $70 per widget that they manufacture for, say, materials and such. But the cost of each widget actually goes down the more you make. Uh, this is commonly referred to as the effect of, of scale, right, of manufacturing at scale. So 
Uh, so there's this extra term here. So anyway, this is a, this is a reasonable but rather simple model. Uh, let's see if we can use this. What does the chain rule say? The chain rule says that dp dw is equal to the partial derivative of p with respect to r times dr dw plus the partial derivative with, of, respect, with, of p with respect to c uh, times dc dw. Now we just have to solve for all of these in individual uh, all these individual things. So let's start with uh, dp, or excuse me, the partial derivative of d with respect to r uh, is just one. Uh, dr dw, on the other hand, uh, is one hundred. The partial derivative of p with respect to c is negative one, and the derivative of c with respect to w is 70 minus 0.2 w. Now we can put this all together. dp dw equals 1 times 100 plus negative 1 times 70 minus 0.2 w. If we wanted to simplify this, uh, the 100 and the 70 uh, would subtract to be 30, uh, and we get plus 0.2 w. And that would be our derivative with respect to w. Notice that we didn't really have to use the chain rule here. Instead, if we wanted, we could have just written p as 100 w, replacing the, one, the r with 100 w, minus the expression we have for c, 3,000 plus 70 w minus 0.1 w squared. And so for calculating an ordinary derivative like this, where we have these expressions, it's actually not necessary to use the chain rule at all. We can just plug in the, uh, the functions that we had for r and c, and then we could just take the ordinary derivative of this function above. And we'll get the same answer. So before we get to how we're actually going to use the chain rule, uh, or where it, would, where it could help us out, let's first note that there are some straightforward generalizations we can make to the chain rule. One of them is we could consider the possibility that x and y are not single variable functions, but they are multivariable functions. In which case, if x is, say, a function of s and t and y is a function of s and t, we might want to know how z changes as s changes. And so we rewrite the uh, chain rule in terms of partial derivatives instead, and it works just as well. So it says if z is a function f of x, y, and x is a function of s and t, and y is a function of s and t, and all of these functions are differentiable, then the partial derivative of z with respect to s is equal to the partial derivative of z with respect to x times the partial derivative of x with respect to s, plus the partial derivative of z with respect to y times the partial derivative of y with respect to s. Uh, so this is exactly what you would expect, but you'll notice there are no ordinary derivatives in here because uh, x, y, and even z are now multivariable functions. They are functions of s and t. So we can only compute partial derivatives this way. The other way we can modify the chain rule is we could deal with functions of more than one variable. So if w now is a function of x, y, and z, then what happens when we try to compute the partial derivative of w with respect to one of those, s or t, is we have to use the full differential here, which is going to have a dx term, a dy term, and a dz term. And you can generalize this to as many variables as you want. You should be able to see the pattern here. So how would we use the chain rule in order to solve problems that are otherwise difficult to solve? Well, here's an application. You'll remember in Calculus 1, you learned how to, take, to do implicit differentiation. That is, how to find the, the slope or the slope of the tangent line or the derivative of a function that was not given you, to you explicitly, y as a function of x, but in terms of an implicit equation where x and a function of x and y is equal to 0. There was a method for doing this in single variable calculus using the chain rule that, uh, that you learned and that required a lot of solving once you'd even differentiated both sides of the equation. 
This method that we're going to see here is a different method. It solves the same kind of problem, but it does it a bit more elegantly, and there's often less solving to do. So here's the idea. We're, asked here, we're asking here, how can we uh, calculate the value dy dx, which is the ordinary derivative of y with respect to x, for the graph of this implicit function, x squared plus y squared minus 6xy is 0. Notice that solving for y here is completely out of the question, because this would be a cubic equation. We don't know how to solve something like this. So what we can do is we can set the entire left side of this equation. We can, we can call that a multivariable function, f of xy equals x cubed plus y cubed minus 6xy. Now remember, the assumption here is not that y and x are independent variables. The assumption here is that y is a function of x in the, in the uh, underlying implicit equation. And so here's the trick. We are going to differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to x. And so how does that look? Here we're taking not the partial derivative, but the actual derivative of f, df dx. And what is that going to be equal? It's going to be equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to x times dx dx plus the partial derivative with respect to y times the ordinary derivative dy dx. This is sometimes called the total derivative of f with respect to x. Now what do we see in this expression? Well, we see the thing we are solving for. There's dy dx right there. So if we can figure out what the other terms of this expression are, maybe we can solve for that. Well, this is actually not bad at all, because you notice that the, uh, the implicit assumption here is that this function is equal to 0. And so specifically, since it's equal to 0, its derivative is also 0. No matter how we change x or y or any of them, this function is 0. So what does that mean? Well, we can go ahead and start solving for some of these. dx dx, we know that dx dx is just going to be equal to 1, the derivative of x with respect to itself. And the remaining two, we can solve for. So let's solve for them. Uh, df partial derivative of f with respect to x, excuse me, is equal to 3x squared minus 6y. We also need the partial derivative of f with respect to y, which is 3y squared minus 6x. Now let's solve this expression. If we solve this for dy dx, we're going to get, on the right side, we're going to have dy dx. On the left side, we'll subtract minus the partial derivative of f with respect to x. And then we will divide by the partial derivative of y with respect to x, or of f with respect to y, excuse me. And of course, the dx dx is still around, but that's just 1. And so this is a nice equation that we have here. This gives us the derivative. And we can just plug in what we found before. So negative. Uh, partial derivative with respect to x would be negative 3x squared plus 6y. And the partial derivative with respect to y is 3y squared minus 6x. And that is our derivative function. And so what I would encourage you to do, if you're skeptical about this procedure, is to go back and differentiate this the ordinary way that you learned in single variable calculus. And what you'll realize is that you have to use the chain rule anyway, and that you have to do a lot of algebra, but you should get the same answer we got here. This idea of a total derivative, where we take one of the variables of the function and we rewrite the total derivative using the chain rule, which allows us to understand how the value changes even as the other variables are changing in relation to that variable, this will allow us to solve the other problem that we ran into trouble with, the question of what happens when we heat an ideal gas inside a glass container. As you recall, the issue that, we had, that I raised with this before 
is that the volume is not going to necessarily be constant because the glass may expand, which allows more volume for the gas to expand into as well. So here's an exercise for you where you would calculate how the pressure actually changes as temperature increases. Go ahead and try this. You can pause the video, I'll wait, and then we'll look at a solution. All right, so what should your total derivative have looked like for dp dt? Well, uh, it should have looked like uh, dn, or partial n, uh, excuse me, that's not right at all. It should have looked like partial of p with respect to n times dn dt plus the partial of p with respect to t times dt dt plus the partial derivative of p with respect to v times dv dt. And so conceptually, what should some of these answers be? Well, of course, dt dt should be 1. dn dt should be 0, because n is what? n is the number of molecules of gas. And since this container is airtight, uh, we expect that the number of molecules inside is not changing. Uh, and so in the final problem, we're given an expression for dv dt. And so we should be able to calculate and simplify uh, the expression that we had here. So what should our partial derivatives look like? Well, again, the first one shouldn't matter. The second partial derivative uh, looks like, so this is dp dt. Uh, the second partial derivative, dp. Uh, in terms of t should have looked like nr over v, uh, then times 1. The next partial derivative uh, should have been minus nrt over v squared. And then dv dt is uh, 5.9 times 10 to the negative 6 v. And we could simplify this a little bit. Uh, you should have simplified this a little bit as well. But since I'm out of room and I'm lazy, I'm not going to do it. All right, let's summarize this very, very short section. Uh, so what should you be getting out of this section? First off, you should have an equation for the chain rule ready to go. Uh, and of course, there's this version, which is the simplest version. But there's also the version where x and y are variables of more than one, or, or functions of more than one variable. And so you have to do partial derivatives. And there's also the version where z is a function of more than two variables. And so you have a longer expression. So that should be something that you're ready to go with. You should also be comfortable with our uh, implicit differentiation, the derivatives of implicit functions that we did. Uh, here is the, here's kind of the the step midway that we derived. Uh, and it might be more useful for you to just memorize this formula or just be able to derive it yourself by using the chain rule on f with respect to x and then recognizing the fact that since f is a constant, the derivative of f with respect to x is 0 and solving. It's also worth noting that you can use that method if f is a function of more than two variables. You could do implicit differentiation on a three or four variable function as well by the same method. Uh, decide which variable you want to differentiate in terms of, apply the chain rule, and then use the fact that since your function is constant, its derivative is 0.